Hello and welcome back. Today we are thinking about depositional landforms in the UK. So, how do glaciers transport material? So, there are three different ways. As the glacier pushes along, there is material that falls upon the top of it. Just like there would be in a river, things fall into the river. Some is carried inside the glacier. For example, debris that fell into crevasses or gaps in the glacier then got stuck and enters into the glacier systems so in the middle. And a lot of material is frozen to the base of the glacier that's been plucked along or ended up in our quarry glaciers through the Bergstrom crevasse at the end, through freeze thaw weathering and all things like that. So there are three different ways that glaciers transport material. So where does the material that glaciers carry come from? Firstly, rock fall through weather debris and gravity on the edge of a glacier. Avalanches often bring lots of snow and ice and debris to the glacier. Volcanoes, if they're nearby, in glacial areas. Debris flows, so melting snow and ice can combine scree, which is just like bits of rock and sand and sediment and things like that. Soil, mud, and bring that onto the glacier. Abrasion uses or brings material onto the glacier as well. Plucking definitely does, and so do aeolian deposits, which basically is deposits of material that have come and blown on by the wind. So, deposition. Why do glaciers deposit material? So, deposition occurs when ice melts. Most melting occurs at the snout, so at the very front of the glacier, and so this is where the majority of glacial deposition takes place. As you go down the mountain, it gets warmer. Eventually, the front or the snout of the glacier reaches a place where it's warm enough to melt and deposit its load. As a glacier slowly retreats or melts, it leaves behind a bed of broken rock fragments called till. There is no water to transport or move the till. It's not sorted by size and is very jagged. So we are looking at this little part of the specification today. Let's just keep going. So, at the front here, we have what we call a moraine. This is what we call a terminal moraine. It's found at the very, very end of the glacier. This is where the glacier terminates. Along the side, you can also see two other things that look very similar. They are what we call lateral moraines. So, it's still that same material, it's just on the side of the glacier. I've just given you the name of that, haven't I? The thing... The name given to sand, st st soil, stones, rocks, etc. that are transported by the glacier is all called glacial till. So, as your first task, please can you describe what glacial till is? Just pause the video, write it down and then click play again and we'll move on. When the glacial till is deposited by the glacier, it creates a landform called moraine. So this is our terminal moraine, and this is what we call our lateral moraine. So can you write a definition of a moraine, please? So what is the difference between till and a moraine? Let me try and move this so you can see it. It's not working? Oh well. So what's the difference between till and moraine? Till is the mixture of rocks and sediment that are carried along and eventually deposited by a glacier. Landforms are just landforms that are made up of that till. So it's unsorted, um, it's not been carried by meltwater, so it's not all smooth like rocks would be on the beach, for example. It's unsorted, there's no rhyme or reason to where it goes. And in the Lake District, it looks a little bit like this today. So in your books or on your sheets, I would like you to list the various different types of moraine. There are five. So we have our terminal moraine, where the glacier terminates. As the glacier continues to move up, that's what we call a recessional moraine. So you can see here, so as it recedes, there are kind of clear barriers of where the glacier once was. So that's called our recessional moraine. As you've seen from that picture, the moraines at the side of the glacier, these are the edges. This is called our lateral, lateral moraine. While we have our tributary glacier and our main valley glacier where they join together, 
they both also had lateral moraines. So when they join together, they join under the ice and you can see that moving down the middle here. This is what we call our medial moraine. And then finally, our ground moraine is what's going on underneath the bed of the glacier. So I would like you to describe each type of moraine. Why does it get deposited? So firstly, our terminal moraine. This is when the glacier reaches a place that it melts. Everything that the glacier was carrying falls onto the ground as till. This is called a moraine. And when it builds up a ridge at the very, very end of the glacier, as far as it goes, it's the terminal moraine. Lateral moraine is found along the sides of a glacier. Let me see if I can move. There we go, that'll be a bit better. So our lateral moraine is found along the sides of the glacier. And our recessional moraine is where the terminal moraine once was. As the glacier continues to retreat, it stops at certain times of year. And so there is another moraine that ends up there. It's basically a second terminal moraine, but we call it recessional instead. So that's our terminal moraine down at the end. As it continues to retreat upwards, we have our recessional moraine. And then at the sides, we have our lateral moraine. So continue to describe each type of moraine for me, please. So this is our terminal moraine at the very end. These are our lateral moraines at the sides of a glacier. This is our medial moraine. So where two lateral moraines of a tributary glacier and the main valley glacier join together and you can see the moraine moving down. And then finally, we have our ground moraine. So this is spread all over the ground as the glacier retreats up the valley in warmer times. So we can use these moraines to tell us how fast the glacier is moving. So from this picture, you can see that in 1900, this was the terminal moraine of the glacier. This is as far forward as it ever got. This is a recessional moraine from 1931. So you can see it's retreated quite a lot in 31 years here. There are recessional moraines here from 1960 and 1990. So the retreat has got a lot less. Another one from 2005 and then another from 2013. So I would like you to answer this question for me, please. Explain how you know that this glacier is melting. and When did it melt fastest? So just pause the video and answer that for me, please. And there are different types of moraine, as you know. So I would like you to copy and complete these two sentences. A is what kind of moraine and why do you know? And B is what kind of moraine and how do you know? Pause it and then pick it up when you're done. So moraines look a little bit like this. They're unsorted glacial till. There's rocks and rhyme and reason with no rhyme and reason. They're not layered, they're not sorted. They're just kind of everywhere. This is what a moraine looks like. This is our lateral moraine, and this is our medial moraine that's been left behind when the glacier retreats. So another landform of glacial deposition is what we call a drumlin. A drumlin is formed when a glacier flows over a thick layer of till left behind by a previous glacier. They are low hills shaped like the back of a spoon or half an egg. <coughs> So, a group of drumlins is called a swarm. Look at the photo on the last slide, or this. Um, we are going to watch this video very quickly. It's about a minute long, and then you're gonna explain what a drumlin is. So, as you can see, the glacier is moving forward. It's got loads of um, sediment in it and there's already something on the valley floor this then starts to build up other material it traps it and so over time that builds up and builds up and so this glacial till continues to add to it which is what we see left behind in a moraine okay 
So, can you please explain what a drumlin is? What's it made of? Glacial till. And it always flows in the direction of the ice. So in a second, I'm going to show you a picture and your task will be to work out which direction the ice has flown. <coughs> so, the direction of drumlins. In this one, this is the steeper side. This is the more lenient side. So we call this the stoss and this the lee. Stoss and lee, or crag and tail. So I'm going to leave this one up to you. Which way did the glacier flow? So the steep side is where it's come from. The more like relaxed incline is where it's going. Yes, it's gone from C up to D. And then finally, erratics. Erratics are stones and rocks that were transported by the glacier and then left behind when the glacier melted. Erratics can be carried for hundreds of kilometres and can range from pebbles to large boulders. Scientists sometimes use erratics to determine ancient glacier movement. An erratic is a boulder that is different from the rock of that local area upon which it is sitting. They have been transported and deposited by a glacier and these erratics are used as indicators of patterns of former ice flow. These rocks are carried a very long way from where they started and only a glacier is strong enough to have carried these rocks hundreds of miles. They are called erratics because they are completely out of place and they don't match the landscape around them. So as you can see, there's a little person here these are absolutely huge sometimes. You can walk up on them, you can climb up on them. There's one in the Lake District that you can literally get on top of and it's massive. Um, they just don't fit the landscape in which they're in. So for the last couple of minutes, please can you answer this exam question? Explain the formation of different landforms of glacial deposition. Use figure 22 and your own understanding. This is a six mark question from the AQA specification in 2019. So you need to identify the various different landforms of glacial erosion. So it's given you drumlins. It's given you a terminal moraine here. What is this? And can you explain their different landforms? So pause the video. It finishes here anyway, but try and answer that question for you or for me. And if you want to go and get the mark scheme after you have done it, if you go to the AQA website and look at past papers, it's from the 2019 paper. So I hope this has been helpful. Thank you very much and I will see you soon.